hello. What brings you here? Oh, you're here to fry some fish. Funny thing, I am too. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 451 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. This here electronic engineering podcast brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. AI reigns supreme in this week's podcast. We're talking about DeepMind's new foray into rainfall prediction and the challenges of on-device AI with Pool and Desai from Cadence Design Systems. But first, you know it, you love it. It's time for a little news you may have missed. That's right, DeepMind is taking on precipitation. And guess what? It's more accurate than current methods of testing. But this isn't any kind of weather forecasting. The kind of forecasting that DeepMind is now tackling is called nowcasting, which is actually the prediction of rain and other phenomenon related to rain within the next one to two hours. So what DeepMind set out to do was support this new science of nowcasting with the development of a machine learning tool that will give a new level of precision to these efforts by utilizing high precision radar data that can track rain every five minutes at a resolution of only one kilometer. But how did DeepMind develop this new incoming rain prediction tool? Well, with the help of a new generative modeling approach, which makes predictions based on an analysis of the previous 20 minutes of observed radar in the United States and in the UK. Now, this new tool does concentrate on what they call medium to heavy rain events. Not that kind of Oregon drizzle that happens in my neck of the woods for about nine months of the year. And what did they find? It worked really well. So this new tool called the DeepMind Deep Generative Model of Rain tool was actually tested by 50 trained meteorologists in the UK and was shown as a superior option in 89% of cases compared to the now casting methods which are widely used throughout the world. So, where is this DeepMind model of rain tool headed in the future? Well, DeepMind plans to build on these results with data from rare and intense rain events and with the addition of longer-term predictions. The team at DeepMind summarizes the project like this. This collaboration between environmental science and AI focuses on value for decision makers, opening up new avenues for the now casting of rain and points to the opportunities for AI in supporting our response to the challenges of decision making in an environment under constant change. Go DeepMind, go! I, for one, who is raised in the land of drizzle, showers, and gully washers, I support you 100%. All right, keeping with our AI theme this week, it's time to bring in longtime friend of the show, Poulin Desai, to chat about the requirements for on-device AI today, what you will need as an AI SOC developer, and how Cadence is taking on on-device AI with its new Tensilica AI platform. Hi, Poulin. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Nice talking to you again. So we're talking about the new Tensilica AI platform. But before we get into the details, Poulin, can you describe the varying on-device AI requirements we're seeing today? Yeah. So we'll first describe uh, what we mean by on-device AI. So here we are talking about AI inferencing on these devices like intelligent sensor, IoT audio, mobile platforms, IoT vision, automotive and ADAS. So where you're doing the inferencing on device itself. 
And in the market, you know, depending upon what you're trying to do, there are different requirements for performance, power, area, and the workload. So performance could be, you know, less than a top or even less than a 0.1 tops, all the way to hundreds of tops for the automotive. And then because it's an on-device inferencing, low latency, then uh, what our customers want is that instead of the peak top, because usually everybody will quote, oh, I got, this is the maximum tops I can run. It's really what is a realistic uh, network performance. And then similarly in the power side, you know, you have intelligent sensors or hearable wearables, uh, very low powers in, you know, less than 10 milliwatt type of power is very key. Then what this customer's want is a multiple modes of operation. So there is what is called an always on mode, which might be an even microwatt or, you know, less than 10 milliwatt, as we talked about, to a regular mode. And then they might have a turbo mode. When they go into the turbo mode, they need maximum throughput, uh, maximum uh, performance coming through that. Uh, but then we look at the workload and for this inference. So the first thing is what type of data types? You know, people want fixed data types, but then 8-bit, 16-bit, even 4-bit. There is always going to be a floating point. You know, is a 16-bit floating point, 32-bit floating point. There's something called B float. There's also single sensor or multiple sensor and then concurrent operations of AI plus other workload. And then we, and as an IP provider, uh, when the customers want to integrate our IP into their SOC, they are looking at not just saying how many mm square uh, of silicon they will have to use, but in this given silicon, what is the performance per mm square or you know tops per mm square? So as you can see, that uh, you know performance, power, different workload and area, depending upon the type of uh, final product and type of application one is running, there are a lot of different requirements that we have to address. Okay, so pulling. What do you think is needed to address on-device AI SOC developer needs? And specifically, how is Cadence positioned to address this on-device AI? Yeah, so at the end of the day, our customers are taking our IP and they're integrating that in an SOC. And they could be a semiconductor company or a vertically integrated company who has a specific need. And you know, we kind of break that down into three different buckets, uh, you know, what overall their market requirement, obviously, most important for them to do a time to market, are they able to get the timeline that they need to do the development costs, right? Because uh, when you are developing this uh, low nanometer technology, you don't want to be continue to, you know, do new tape out. So that gets very expensive. And then product differentiation is very key. And then if we look at the product itself, either the SOC or the final product, you know, what is important to them? They need a longer battery life. They need uh, performance scalability means that they don't want to have different uh, platforms and different solutions for different SKUs that they are offering. Offering. They want a similar architecture going from their low-end product all the way to their higher-end product. And a lot of this platform, especially the IoTs and the mobile platforms um, and IoT, uh, audio or vision, they are in yearly product release, right? So they always have a certain time that they will introduce new product. And so yearly, they need to introduce a new product. And as an IP vendor, we have to make sure that we can meet their requirement. You know, So then from SOCs as an IP, what would they need? Obviously, the low power and always on as we talked about earlier. Uh, what is more important also for them is IP configurability and extensibility. So this is to meet the differentiation, right? So as we talked about that, they want to differentiate their product because we are providing an IP and the same IP everybody uses, they don't have any differentiation, but then if they have ability to configure the IP, they have an ability to extend the performance or extend the features, then they can differentiate their product. And then as a hardware IP provider, we have to provide a very comprehensive software to our customers, right? So we have to make sure that, you know, the customers are looking for a comprehensive software for the low end all the way to their high end. So uh, you could see that there is a requirement for a specific market, there's a requirement for an SOC, and there's a requirement for IP that we provide. So that answered the first part of your question. And then going into the second part of your question is saying, how are we addressing it? So we are addressing it uh, multiple ways. The first is just kind of setting the background 
that I am part of Tensilica and Tensilica has been in the business of providing processor for a long time our Extensa product it is configurable and extensible and we can extend it with our Tensilica instruction extension that has our standard CPU 32 bit risk multiple level of pipeline along with our LLVM compiler and um, RTOS that goes along with that and then we expanded that further by uh, adding very domain specific DSPs we have our very popular hi-fi audio line that addresses audio and voice, our vision line that is targeted for image processing and computer vision processing. Anywhere there is an image sensor, our DSPs get used. And then we also have our radar and communication a DSP, what we call a domain-specific DSP. And then along with that, now we are also offering our AI solutions, you know, and AI solutions we offer with extensions of instructions on our DSP. We have AI engines, we have uh, multi-core uh, solutions and neural network libraries and neural network compilers to go along with it. So we as Tensilica, part of Cadence, we offer a very comprehensive solution going from CPU, DSP, AI solution, along with all the necessary software. Now, Pulin, at the AI Hardware Summit, you guys unveiled your Tensilica AI expansion strategy. So can you tell me a little bit about this new Tensilica AI platform? Yeah. So what we did as kind of addressed earlier that we see a lot of different wedding requirements for our IP, depending upon the end user or the SOC developers. And we have introduced three different categories of product families for our AI platform. The first one is what we call AI base, you know, so idea of the AI base is that this is the baseline AI performance that we can offer. And this we offer with our our DSP, so whether our Hi-Fi DSP or our Vision DSP or our Basepaint and Radar DSP. And over here, we are giving the the AI performance by providing AI uh, ISA extensions. By doing that, we are able to provide at least a 30x higher performance compared to CPU and 5 to 10x better energy efficiency compared to CPU. So that's what we call the base performance level of product. AI base is the first one. Then we offer something called AI boost. And what AI boost means that if a customer says, okay, I have a baseline a performance with the DSP that we are offering, but I want to boost the performance for the next queue or whatever reason they want to increase the performance and they want to improve the, the energy, then we offer AI engines to go along with our DSP. And by adding those engine compared to the DSP, we can have a 80% less energy per inference and also a greater than 4x ops per watt compared to our AI base. So the idea of the AI base is to give you the higher performance, the scalability and performance, but the most important is to uh, offer the energy efficiency. And then the last part is called AI Max. And idea of the AI Max is that this is a turnkey solution that our flagship AI performance and energy efficiency solution. And over here, uh, we have put together a solution of our AI DSP and AI engine to keep, provide a turnkey solution. Not only the single core, but the multiple cores of our uh, AI solution can be put together. Uh, and we provide that as a turnkey solution and our customers uh, don't have to do that on their own. You know, So that's the AI Max. And then both the AI Boost and AI Max uh, uses our AI engine that has random sparse compute engine, uh, runtime compression features like that differentiates uh, our product compared to anything out there in the market. Okay, so Pullen, can you tell me a little bit more about the products Cadence has introduced as, as part of your Tensilica AI strategy? So as kind of we touched on the AI base side, we already have our Hi-Fi family, multiple Hi-Fi DSPs shipping in the market. We have multiple Vision DSPs shipping in the market. We introduced a couple of Vision DSPs earlier in the year. So those are already shipping in large volume. They are already integrated in a lot of end product. And with this introduction of our AI platform and three product family, the first thing we are introducing to the market is our first AI engine called NNE110. And this is part of our boost strategy where people can take this NNE 110 and connect that to one of the DSP. And this first NNE engine is going from 32 Mac to 128 Mac. 
It uses our parse compute engine. It also has a compression decompression engine built in, and it supports the full software the suites like a TensorFlow Lite Micro. There is a neural network engine compiler. As part of the solution, it also offers a system a simulator, our instruction set simulator, so customers can run their network and see what the performance would be. The second product we introduce is part of our NNA Max solution is NNA110. This is a solution that integrates our AI engine and our Vision P6 and Vision P1 DSP. This goes up to four tops. And again, it utilizes our K-level sparse engine. And along with this, we also have our neural network compiler, our Android neural network API. So those are all the software solution that we offer. And the third family of which is multiple product that is part of our multi-core NNA product or part of our AI Max family that we have multiple cores of NNA core. And this is a turnkey solution that can go from up to eight core and offer 32 tops of performance. And we give you a turnkey solution, but it also gives a flexibility for customers to put local memory that is shared across this processor. This also has DMA to transfer information from the local memory to the, the DDR externally. So here, customers don't have to do their own design. This is a turnkey solution to give them up to 32 tops of performance. So summarize uh, NNA 110, that's our first AI engine, NNA 110, that's part of our AI Max solution. And then there are multiple uh, products for our multi-core NNA products. All right, Pool, and it's time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, I know you're a Niners fan, and we're a bit of a... Uh... Packers fan in my house. So how do you think they're going to do against each other coming up soon? Well, this is the home first home game of the season for the Niners. The last year, there were a lot of injuries, so they didn't do well. But the year before, that defensive line, you know, I think we beat Green Bay very handedly, especially I think Rodgers was harassed quite a bit by Nick Bosa. So I think uh, this will be a good game. Obviously, you know, Rodgers always plays uh, very tough against Niners. I think he's still bitter that they didn't draft him, but at the end, I see Niners coming out ahead. So let's see what happens, uh, but I'm pretty confident. Awesome. Well, we'll see about that, Poulin. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me yet again, Poulin. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. All right. Thank you very much, Amelia. And before we go, don't forget to check out my brand new maker-themed monthly fish fry podcast called makers today. In our fourth episode of this series, I chat with Kitty Young from Art by Physicist. Kitty and I chat about the variety of super cool designs she has created as part of her successful Kickstarter campaign, what her work as a creative technologist and senior program manager at the garage entailed, her passion for quantum computing, and how the worlds of high-tech fashion and quantum computing overlap in her life. And you won't want to miss another exciting episode of this podcast series launching next week. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you want to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by yours truly. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's fish frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. It really does help. Also, if you'd like any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's fish frying page. 
Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com. Or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of October 15th, 2021, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.